I really had my adventure. What happened? Down, I thought the house was down there and it's muddy there and I'm starting looking around if there's a, really a house between the trees and the next one there's nothing. Be on the, on the fucking road. So what are you running on the back? The Mesa Kuru 3, eh? Yeah? Alright, so Donnie, tell us, what, what are your initial impressions of the bike? It's an awesome bike. It's a bike I've just picked it up for the first time now, and it picks up much easier than a 990 that I can show you. Um, and I think what, what makes it easier to pick up is the fact that, uh, once again, the weight is down on the bottom. Okay. The great thing about this bike is it's got a nice handle at the back. And, wow. Easy. That is very easy. Huh? But yes, I think the designers of, of the 790 listened to the guys with the older, bigger adventure bikes. Here at Shakalan, uh, New Shawi and KwaZulu Natal. Uh, this setting was the original setting for the crawl in the film Shaka Zulu, uh, which was made in, if I'm not mistaken, late 80s. Uh, mm. Shaka Zulu was made. So I thought it'd be a great place to bring Donnie out, have a chat, have a coke, get some riding, and, and get his opinion on the 791. Just from the ride, bike looks solid. Um, the only niggle that you've found now which really annoys you is the GPS mount that yeah. that's a bit dodgy. That vibration is um, irritating. You're saying, Donnie, about the GPS mount? Yeah, Clint, I'll have to go and revisit this mount. That you can see it's vibrating and it's uh, it's very irritating. And that, that it, it, you know, it's marked. That's that's it, it actually the bracket there says GPS mount. So I'll either have to look at securing it the back to stop that or move it to the handlebar with the old additional clamp. Okay. And obviously you came from Richards Bay today, so you've done probably what about 46, about 70 k's of tarmac. Yeah. How did you find it out on the tarmac? Uh, that, uh, uh, Matuba Sedusha also is based on the tarmac. Uh, the, the, the bike is amazing, comfortable on, on the road. And I think what they tried to develop in the bike is as a youth off-road bike, but also a bike that can be comfortable on the tar road. I find it very, very comfortable. Um, the, the, the R has got a rather low windshield. Um, fortunately, I'm not tall. Yeah. There is a there is a bigger or a taller uh, screen available uh, that that they fit on the adventure. normal adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like I said, my height setting uh, for me is fine. Okay, you how tall are you? Sure, that's a good question. Doctors always ask me. I think about five foot, five foot seven. Five seven. Yeah. Okay. Around about there. And standing position, it looks nice and comfortable mm, for your height. I think. Yes. I think if you're any taller, you probably need to put far risers or something yes, like that. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Usually, if you're not comfortable, it shows you on the back. You feel it at your back. But uh, no, that's fine. It's hundred percent for me. Tony, what are the, what are the service intervals for this bike? That's fifteen thousand. A thousand, first thousand, and then after fifteen. Like I said, they made the maintenance and the servicing on this bike much simpler. Your, your, your air cleaner is there. There's it. There's two screws. You right there. It just slides out. Here's your battery. You've got two screws there. This cover comes off and you take your battery out. So that is a huge improvement on the maintenance and service part of the bike. Let's talk about fuel range. Uh, they... They claim 400 kilometers on the 20 liter yeah. tank. Yeah. What is your experience there? I feel that this is the second tank. The first tank, I got 350 out of it. But that was on um, dirt and sand and 
Yeah, but I was playing, playing with the throttle, so that wasn't very economical. I would think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that on the open run you'll get 400 Yeah. And tell me, what, what did it cost you roughly? What are they going for? What's the South African retail price right now for a 7 year 195. 195? Yes. Okay. It's well priced. If you look at the competitors and later on market, I think it's well priced. I mean, you've ridden, you've, you know, you ride a Triumph. Mm. Uh, you've ridden two 800 uh, BMW GSs. Mm. Um, you ride the 701 Husqvarna. Mm. Uh, and now the KTM, as far as an all-round bike, and it's obviously, you know, you haven't had much time on the 790. Mm. How does this bike stack up against us? Yes, it's, it's a difficult question. And, that, and my son JP asked me the same question the other day. And I said to him, you know, it's, it's just different bikes, different rides. Um, but if I had to, if if I if I had to make a choice, if they take if they take all the bikes and say you can keep one, I will keep the 790. For me, it's just, like I said, it's nice in the car, it's comfortable, and yes, it seems to be nice on the dirt as well. So just getting, just getting back to the 790 Adventure R, we talked about the various options on the bike. It's the, the electronics, the, the first day I got on the bike, like I said, I came from the 990, there's no electronics there. It's just a motorbike. And then the first day I got on the bike, I was a bit intimidated with the electronics, uh, I've never been a very electronic type of person. But that night, I took the, the, the manual and I read it the next morning, and it's actually just comes to you. It's very, it's, it's very accessible and it's simple. And it, you, you can do it all on the run. You can change, as you travel, you can change the settings. Only when you want to activate the rally mode, you need to be stationary. Okay. What's nice about it, I know in the 1190 and, and I think in the 1090, if you set it to, say, off-road, and you switch the bike off, you had, to, you, had, you had to go back and do all the settings <laughs> again. Yep. This is not there. When you switch it off, it comes on there. So that's nice. Well, that, that's absolutely... I mean, I, I can't understand why they they ever made it in those other bikes. I mean, it's just bloody annoying. Yeah, no, it is. So. Every time you switch off your bike, yes. and like we've been today, we've been riding, stopping, yes. riding. Every time you stop, if mm. you're on the 1190 or... You know, it's a pain in the bum. Mm. Absolute pain. I, just, I can't understand why it was ever made like that. You know, whether it's a, a safety feature or what, but it's bloody annoying. I know in those bikes, the guys fit it what they call a donkel, and, and, and that overrides that thing. But uh, I don't know exactly how it works. But that is very really nice. That um, where you switch it off, that's where you switch it on. This big looks like wing nuts. Those are your preload clickers, okay? Now it's on the surface now. You've got, you've got two or three more options there. Then you've got your rebound on your throttle side and you've got compression on your clutch side. Okay, cool. Tony, thank you for spending the time with me. And uh, yeah, so all you subscribers out there, all you guys that are looking to buy the 790 Adventure R, uh, Donnie, he's in that situation. He's had it for a month or so. He's had a, you know, ups and downs. And uh, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed it, uh, and uh, we'll be looking forward to hear from Donnie in due course, maybe in six months or a year from now, mm -hmm. and have a similar discussion with Donnie about his experience with the 790R, and whether there are other things that have come up, maybe, you know, issues that other folks have had, and he's still going to have. So yeah, Donnie, if you don't mind, we'd like to have a chat to you in six months yeah, and maybe welcome. after a year, mm. see how many kilometers you've traveled mm. and uh, if you're still happy with, with the KTM. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot, Donnie. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks, Lynn.